Our next spreadsheet video is gonna begin with inserting an image. Now there's a bunch of ways to do that in Google Spreadsheets, so let's take a, th take a look at those. The first I can do is insert image, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna put the image basically above the spreadsheet. So again, I'm gonna do this the cloudy way. So I'm gonna, you can see I have a Jupyter page open. I'm gonna get this image from the Jupyter page, a right click, copy image URL, head back into my, sp my spreadsheet, and paste the URL, I'll do insert image by URL, I paste it in there, I found it, and now you can see it's not an actual part of my spreadsheet, so I click on it, and I can move it around, and you know, if I print this spreadsheet, if it's covering those, it will be, and that's just how it's gonna look. And it doesn't give you many options for editing this. Um, edit doesn't mean edit, look, it just brings up an option to load a new one. I think load new would make more sense. But then I can also delete it, of course. A script we're not gonna get into. And then reset sizes if I've started changing the size, because I can resize this. Um, the issue is, if I don't hold shift, so first I'll not hold shift, it's gonna distort and get rid of the aspect. So now I'm gonna reset size. And if I hold shift, um, it's gonna you know keep my aspect ratio. But be careful, because if I have my arrow up here, watch, I let go. Oh, worked that time. So, but if I don't hold shift, it can distort it. So that's all above my uh, spreadsheet. There is a way to get pictures, images into the actual cells, and we're gonna do that next. So delete this image. And this, once again, just like this link had a certain syntax to get it to work, images also have a certain uh, syntax. So let's say I want them to put an uh, image of Jupiter in this column. The way we do that is equals image, then you can see it shows you the syntax. I do parenthesis, quote, I still have the URL for Jupiter you know, stored in there, copied in there, so I paste. And then I do end quote, and now there are a few different options. So I'm gonna flip over to this <clears throat> presentation. And here's how we do it. Image, URL, and then we got one, two, three, and four. And here are the four ways to do it. Size to fit is gonna keep your aspect ratio, but it's gonna shrink it right into the cell. Stretch to fit fills the cell. Original size, you're gonna see, um, won't resize the cell, so you'll basically not see a bunch of the picture and then custom size you'll see in a second. So first let's do one. One was size to fit, so I put a one here, close parenthesis, and I'd enter. Like I said, the aspect ratio stays the same and it stays within the cell. Um, if I adjust the cell size, then it'll adjust, but remember that aspect ratio stays. So now let's do two, which is stretch to fit. Three was original size, so you're gonna see it it basically is just, you see the top little corner there. And then for four, you have to put in a custom height and width. So I'm gonna do whatever, 200 by 400. It, it's gonna feel a lot like the original size because I'm only gonna see a certain part of it. So that's how I get images into cells rather than having them above the spreadsheet. And you can decide whether or not you think that's useful. I'm gonna put it back to one, just leave it like that. All right, next thing I wanna talk about is how a spreadsheet has the ability to extend patterns, it's pretty cool. Um, so if I, let's just start a normal pattern, like one, two, three, four, nice dollars, since that's what this column is. And if I select these four, and then I go in the bottom right corner, that's gonna let me extend it, take a look. I stretch it out, and it actually can continue the pattern, which is pretty cool. But not just simple counting like that, it can also do like, that's not what I meant. One, three, five. So let's say I wanted to do, you know, the odd dollar amounts. And I extend that. Pretty smart. It can even do days. And it just, you know, cycles through those. So extending patterns might find that useful. Next is um, spell check, because I always have people say like, you know, I really wish it would, if I misspell cable, I wish it would, you know, red underline like it does in other, other apps, but it doesn't. And even when I hit enter, it does nothing uh, as far as underlining. 
So there is a spell check. I don't find it terribly useful, but under tools, spelling, we start from the top and it can it basically goes cell by cell to look for misspellings. And I think this is pretty cumbersome and it takes a long time. But even from here, I can choose it. It can make some suggestions. It would be great if it would just do that within the cell, but I don't know all the programming behind it. There's probably a reason they do it this way. So then you can fix it and you can go through the whole document like that. Spell check if someone asks where that is in spreadsheet. Um, I haven't talked much about collaboration and that's just because it's the same as documents, which we've already been through. You can share, so uh, you got your share button. I'll share it with my school account here. Um, and you can collaborate all the same ways. So I can collaborate through chat down the side. Um, it'll show me where the other person, you know, what cell they're in. Uh, I can still do comments and I can actually leave comments right within cells. So let, you know, I'll do that. And so that little your mark there, if I go over, hover over that cell, it shows me the comment. And it does revision history as well. So I have all those collaboration things, but I'm gonna to talk to two specific um, spreadsheet collaboration uh, that are different from uh, documents, okay? So first, I'm gonna add a few more sheets and do that down here with this little plus. You see that little one basically means there's a comment on that sheet, so if I take the comment out, if I resolve it, that one goes away. But I have sheet four, sheet five, that's because before I created two and three. And I can, let's just take a look at what I can do with a sheet. Um, and I'll get to collaboration. I said I was gonna get to collaboration. You can delete, of course, duplicate, rename. So let's call this um, planets. So it, it changes the sheet name down there. You can hide it. Okay. And uh, you can see over here it says, Use view to unhide. So I do that. Bring it back. All right, so I can do all those things and I can shift it right to left. I don't know why I'd use that. You can just grab and drag. So that's probably what I'd do. But now let's talk about um, the collaboration parts. This, uh, the, the one I didn't talk about on there is called Protect Sheet. The reason you'd use this and the reason I used it in school was I created a an attendance document. Let me find the template here um, for schools to use, and my school was using it. And so you'd have student names down the side here. You'd have months across the top, and then I have formulas that are gonna calculate tardy, absent, present. And I had all the grades down here. So for now, I just put grade five. But we had kindergarten, you know, first, second, third. And originally, all the teachers could edit all the sheets. Uh, DPI came in during the audit and said that's a little too much access. So then what I did is I went to each sheet, and I'll come back here because I can, and I protected the sheet. And what that does is, take a look, I click protect sheet, and you can say who can edit it. So what I did is I said me, and then I just checked the name of each teacher for each grade. So all the other teachers could still view everyone's spreadsheets, but they couldn't um, edit them. And that, that uh, got through the audit. So I can just check that name and obviously you'd have a much bigger list if you had all the teachers here. But protecting the sheet is showing who can edit um, even though everyone can still view all the different sheets. So that's one part as we're working together collaboration. The other is just these really helpful notification rules. So if I'm working with someone on a spreadsheet, um, they might work on it. And this still has email collaborators and other things that uh, Documents has, but it also has this. Take a look at these notification rules. I can say, notify me, so send me an email, when any changes, when uh, any collaborator makes any changes to this spreadsheet. So if I had some important data in here that I, um, you know, I didn't want other editors to change, but I still want them to have editing access to the sheet, I could say, well, if they make a change, let me know. Or if they change, you know, a certain if they change any of these then let me know and you can see that's so this could be really helpful um, as far as seeing what others are doing on the actual sheet